What's up, everybody? Welcome to the Pick 6 Podcast, U.S. Sports Daily NFL Podcast. I'm Will Brinson. I'm your host. It is Sunday, June 6th, and we have an emergency podcast because Julio Jones has been officially traded. It's done. After weeks, months of speculation, Julio Jones on the move, being traded by the Atlanta Falcons to the Tennessee Titans for a second-round pick and then a swap of other later picks. Uh, the Falcons send a, a fourth to the Titans and get a six back, I believe is what's correct. Ryan Wilson joining me to break it down. Wilson on a uh, scale of one to 10. What was your, Oh my God. I'm so annoyed that they did this on a Sunday afternoon level. Oh, zero. I was at a soccer yeah. tournament for my kids. So when it happened, so I didn't have to be involved in, in any of the, the sort of running around like you're like a chicken with his head cut off going on. You took care of that. So that was, that was good. I came home. Um, I was at the soccer tournament sporting my pick six podcast shirt that I currently have on. So I was representing. And uh, so that that actually was a foreshadowing of things to come. So you, you mentioned Atlanta gets Tennessee's second round pick in 2022, a fourth round pick in 2023. Titans get uh, Jones, of course, and Atlanta's sixth round pick. Okay, so Atlanta sent the six back. Tennessee sent a second and a fourth. And perhaps most importantly, the Titans are paying all of Julio's salary. So now Atlanta can yeah. si sign their rookies. That's that is uh, that is a big deal for the Falcons who are short on cash. Tennessee, uh, not exactly loaded in salary cap space, but again, as we all know, the salary cap is a myth. Uh, Stephen O of Sportsline ran the numbers. The Titans go from nine point five wins on average in the simulations to ten point one with the addition of Julio Jones. Their chances to win the division. The AFC South jumped from 40.7% up to 50%. They're a true coin flip, um, I suppose, with the Colts. I would assume there's only two teams that they, the, the site projects will actually win the division. Texans. Yeah, maybe the Texans could be like another 50%. Who knows? And their odds of winning the Super Bowl jumped from 3.2% to 4.7%. For the Atlanta Falcons, their win total goes from 8.9 wins on average down to 8.5%. Their division chances, the odds of winning the NFC South go from 13.1% down to 9.7%. Wow, the Sims were kind of high on the Falcons. And their odds to win the Super Bowl go from a measly 1.3% down to 0.7%. So Julio Jones, in our minds, a big difference maker. And the simulations agree too. 0. 0.6 wins is a, you know, might not seem like a lot. That's a lot for a for a non-quarterback. And that says uh that shows you how impactful Julio Jones is. Uh, you see that big jump for the Titans, too. This is the thing for me, Wilson. What I've been saying all along with, with this Julio Jones stuff and why Tennessee made sense, their depth chart was bare after AJ Brown. Uh, now they signed Josh Reynolds in free agency, and that that's nice and all, but Josh Reynolds as your third receiver is good. Chester Rogers as your fourth receiver is not bad. Josh Reynolds is your second and Chester Rogers is your third. That's a problem. Now it's not. They have Julio Jones and AJ Brown trotting out there starting wide receivers along with Derrick Henry, which gives them a, just an absolutely terrifying trio of skill position guys that Ryan Tannehill will be working with. Yeah, th this is great news. And I think, our guy Stephen O did a great job of explaining it. You were reading the the stats off that's for their in simulations. I mean, you're giving up a second round pick and and, and change to go from forty percent to to fifty percent to make the to win the division and, and to in, increase your playoff odds from sixty two to seventy two percent. That I, that just seems like a no brainer. And we've been talking forever that Julio Jones is old. He is only thirty two. He has three years left on his deal, yeah. including the the upcoming year. So they'll get him through the year thirty four. Uh, I think there's an out two years from now if they, if they want to do that. But but it makes a lot of sense for the reasons you're pointing out. They lost Johnny Smith to free agency. Um, no one cares about Johnny Smith now that they have. Uh, Corey, da Corey Davis, too. Corey Davis, actually, I think I would rather – between the two, I would I think Johnny Smith might be the bigger loss. Oh, yeah, 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 for sure, for sure, for sure. Um, but, right, so you have A.J. Brown, Julio Jones, Josh Reynolds is a great number three. But to your point before that, there were some concerns about how that was going to work out. But, but again, Derrick Henry's there. They drafted Des Fitzpatrick out of Louisville uh, on day three to, to help out as a wide receiver. We'll see what his contributions are. I would imagine they won't be a lot as a rookie, especially now the way the depth chart uh, shakes out. And, and I think – and Stephen O's numbers sort of bear this out. You now feel really good about the Titans in the division, but the issue remains, and this was the issue last year, what's the defense going to look like? They yeah. drafted Caleb Farley, injury issues there, but of course they did the same with Jeffrey Simmons a few years ago. He's been great. They signed Bud Dupree to fix the pass rush that was uh, hard to watch at times. They drafted Rashad Weaver out of Pitts Pittsburgh to help with the, the pass rush as well, but that's going to be the big question. I, I suppose the, the, the other good news is that the Titans, are, excuse me, the Texans are hot mess, so it doesn't really matter, those two games. I can't envision a situation where Tennessee won't be heavily favored in both those games. 
Uh, the Jaguars, we'll see. Um, it, it seems like they, you know, they have the, the franchise quarterback. They have the the great running back now, in Travis Etienne. But JLC has been writing about this for some time. There, there seems to be a lot of weirdness going on with the Tim Tebow and, and the uh, Urban Meyer hire. We'll see what happens there. There's a lot of moving parts there. And then, of course, the Colts are, are going to be the the team to to challenge the Titans. But I think right now, it's hard to think that the Titans aren't the best team in this division. Yeah, I mean, uh, you know, Vegas, you look at William Hill and the odds flipped, as I said that they would on our podcast a bunch of times. If you wanted to bet the Titans, you need to do it right before, you know, before. I mean, you can still get the Titans at plus money. Um, it's essentially, I think, a coin flip uh, for Vegas. Uh, I'll look it up real quick. I had it up and it closed. Uh, the Titans plus 110 and the Colts plus 110. Now, mm. the Colts were a favorite. They were like minus 120. I think the Titans were like plus 150. So, I mean, that's 40 cents. That's a lot. If you, But you can still get uh, plus money on the Titans if you wanted to bet them. I, I, I like it. I think... And I don't, I don't necessarily think they had to add Julio Jones, but I, I do agree with you that um, the defense is a bigger problem. But with the Julio stuff, like, like I was really concerned what might happen if A.J. Brown got hurt. You mm -hmm. know, then you have Josh Reynolds as your number one. And at tight end, they have Anthony Ferkser. It just it was a concerning group of skill guys. So now with Julio there, it gives you sort of an out where it's like, you know, if something happens to Julio, you know, you still have AJ Brown, if something happens to AJ Brown, you still have Julio. So it's a much, it's a huge difference. And I think the way that they can be so explosive with their play action is that you, you could really see them, you know, get, you know, get the ball in Julio and, and AJ Brown's hands, you know, as they're running across the field or as they're getting deep and let them do work after the catch. Both guys are also insanely talented uh, deep threats. So, for me, th this this gives – I'm a lot more interested in betting on the Titans to win the division now, especially because I think the price is just incorrect. I don't understand why you would have Carson Wentz. The unknown of Carson Wentz, to me, is not worth the risk of a, of a coin flip there with the Titans. And that's not you trolling because Debo's not even here. But I think no. that's right. We don't know what Carson Wentz is going to look like. By all accounts, he's having a great start to, to his Colts career. But every single – thing you hear coming out of every single OTA it's that every single player is going to the Hall of Fame so we'll have to wait and see how that shakes out I think perhaps <laughs> Julio Jones is obviously a huge get but perhaps the biggest question mark may not be the defense in Tennessee it may be what the offense looks like without Arthur Smith because that was uh, a big part sure. of their success uh, a lot of that went through the tight ends the tight ends as you mentioned now Anthony Ferks or Jeff Swain uh, Jared Pinkney who's I think in his second year now so we'll think we'll, we'll all find out together but I, I think do you know who the Titans office coordinator is without looking? Todd Downing, but only because I looked before the HQ hit I did this morning. So, right. that That's the point. Um, I don't know anything about Todd Downing. I didn't know anything about Arthur Smith. I don't know if Todd Downing's parents own, you know, own some big corporation as well. But he has a lot to work with now, much more than he did 12 hours ago. So, uh, and again, you're playing in a great division. You love this team in this division. You don't love it in the AFC West, for example. So, luckily, they're in the AFC South where they have two and a half teams <laughs> competing to win the division title. Oh, if this was an AFC West team, they're um, they're, being, they're better than best. the. You're saying okay, let's see what Drew Locke looks like, and we'll we'll see who finishes third or fourth. Right, exactly. And instead, because it's a an AFC South team, you really feel like this team has a legitimate chance to make a deep run. I I, I like their over. Uh, I, I think it's important to note that Julio Jones is not Julio Jones is a difference making player. Julio Jones should not completely alter your approach or your feelings about the Titans and the Colts. Now it can put, if you have a certain way, if you feel a certain way, like I, I like the Titans anyway over the Colts, but I was certainly hesitant. It can put you over the top. And I think that's what it does for me more so than it's like, Oh, they got Julio. Well, cancel the season because the Titans are winning the AFC South. But I, I do think everything that they have, they should be, you know, a really closer, like minus 150 to win this division. So I, I think it's a pretty good value. Again, I, I understand the problems. I mean, they're, you know, they're secondary with Janoris Jenkins. You know, you have Caleb Farley as a first round pick who has, you know, medical concerns coming in. Uh, they're not deep at quarterback at all. They signed, um, you know, they, they're just not pass rush. They added Bud Dupree, which is a good signing. Uh, Danico Altry, you know, they have some talent up front, but unless some of these younger guys, you know, we need to see Rashawn Evans take the next step. Harold Landry, the two picks from the 2018 draft need to make a leap forward. Jeffrey Simmons is a key factor here. Uh, and, and if that defense can make some strides and they're going to have to do it with a, with a new DC as well, um, then, you know, yeah, I think the Titans can be a, a, a team that threatens to, to really make a playoff run. Uh, if the defense is bad, 
then they're going to be needing a lot of Julio and a lot of A.J. Brown. It's possible we see a ton of overs for the Titans this year. Yeah, I think the defense is bad. They still are going to be the mix of the division, but there's not going to be much in the way of expectations once they get to the playoffs. I think that's just the reality. So the defense has to figure it out and figure it out pretty quickly because they were terrible last year with definitely fewer than 20 sacks, maybe 19, maybe actually been less than that. Oh, uh, They were one of the worst pass rush teams you'll see, and, and it's been that way for a while. They just need to find the pass rush that hadn't worked out. Bud Dupree, uh, in theory, could be that guy that becomes the A-list pass rusher. I still have – and he was great in Pittsburgh. I still worry about him playing now that he's gotten paid. You know, like, what's he going to be – how's he going to be without the the motivation of going after, the, you know, with the, set, with the franchise? I don't think the motivation will be a thing. I think he'll be motivated, but it's a matter – he's not playing opposite T.J. Watt. So we'll, we'll see once teams can double-team him and not have to worry about anyone else, how that, how that sorts itself out. That's true. All right, for the Atlanta Falcons, man, it's a good thing that on Sunday the Atlanta Hawks appeared uh, poised to, st- like, throttle the philadelphia 76ers because atlanta atlanta sports fans needed a w after taking this l on julio where was uh, that not, uh it was it's happening right now as we're recording but they're up yeah to, i wonder if debo's there that's maybe that's where he went oh maybe maybe that is where he's there we don't we don't know where debo is debo's gone well we do we know where he is we're anyway we don't need to throw debo into the bus um debo's debo's working hard somewhere as always the atlanta falcons I don't get it. Breach, meanwhile, is not working hard. That's why he's not. Breach is not working hard. And that's why we will not mention that on April 27th, Breach predicted that Julio Jones would be traded to the Falcons. What Breach didn't humble brag about in our group chat was that he predicted that Julio Jones would be traded uh, during the draft. So take that L, Breach. <laughs> A little dunk on when he's not here. You'd love to see it. The, the Fal- I mean, look, the Falcons, I don't get it, man. I, 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 I do get it. I get it. Yeah, Julio well, Jones said, it, I want. Well, Julio Jones wants to be traded. He said, I'm out of here. I'm done. I want to be traded. And they they acquiesced to his demands and they sent him somewhere that he'll be happy with. He, you know, he sent him to a good team. But what I don't get is that you restructure Matt Ryan's contract that essentially locks him in for three years. You double down on him that way. Then you triple down on him in the draft by taking Kyle Pitts at number four overall when I, I know factually that they could have traded down. They got offers to from other teams to trade up. Um, yeah, but what if Kyle Pitts is Julio Jones? What's wrong with that? I mean that that would be that would be great if if it ends up where if it ends up like a, a Vikings Justin Jefferson Stephon Diggs situation, right? Great, that's good. They but, don't have any money either, so I mean, there's there's. Sort I, mean, of- I guess I guess my point is when you double and triple down on Matt Ryan, you're saying let's win now, and nothing screams let's win now less quite like trading Julio Jones to to another team. Yeah, no, I get that. And in a lot of ways, the Falcons and the Steelers are similar, but I feel like the Steelers are in much better shape than the Falcons, uh, both salary cap wise, which is a concern because the Steelers in recent years have not been great with the salary cap, but they're also coming off an 11 win season, not a four win campaign. And they didn't just trade away their best player. Um, so I mean, I'm trying to think who their best player would be on offense at this point. Who are the Falcons? Uh, no, no, the Ste- I'm trying to think the Steelers. What, what would be the uh, who, who um, you know, Jones trade of that? I mean, it's not Juju. Deontay Johnson? Maybe. Are the Steelers <laughs> and, terrible? Is that, yeah, how we got a tough year. But I'm okay with this. If you think Kyle Pitts is going to be really good, and unlike 2011 or 2012, whenever they traded for Julio, they traded up to get Julio, had to give up a ton in exchange. They were there for, they took Kyle Pitts. If they had traded down and not gotten Kyle Pitts and gotten rid of Julio, I would be much more concerned about that. Oh, yeah. I mean, if, it's, if you're looking at, if you're the Falcons and you're looking at your depth chart, and you have Calvin Ridley, that's huge. You have Kyle Pitts, that's very nice. Uh, if, you, you know, if, they, if they traded down and hadn't gotten Kyle Pitts, um, you know, they'd be looking at Calvin Ridley, Russell Gage, Christian Blake, Olamide, Zac- Zacchaeus, nice. Corderell Patterson, um, and then Jaden Graham at tight end. So, yes, adding Kyle Pitts is massive. It allows you a little more freedom maybe to trade away uh, Julio Jones. And you would hope that, that Kyle Pitts, one of the highest taken, t- highest drafted tight ends in, in, uh, in pro football history, and uh, one of, considered, you know, a potential like Hall of Fame caliber player, uh, you would hope he would be ready to play year one. That has not always been the case for tight ends coming out of college. Typically, it does take a year or two for them to acclimate and to really put up stats. We'll see how uh, Kyle Pitts is tremendous pass catcher. So this could be fine. You got Arthur Smith there, Dave Ragone. They're gonna, you know, they're gonna have, know how to cook stuff up to get him open. They're, they're I guess, gonna lean on the run game, which you know, something that's sort of been a hallmark of, of, uh, of Arthur Smith in the past, but man, he ain't got no Derrick Henry in, uh, in Atlanta, buddy. It's Mike Davis who got massive quads, but, um, I, huh. this is sort of, it's kind of just basically going to revolve around Calvin Ridley, who suddenly looks like he could be 
an absolute monster next year, especially if the Falcons defense is bad. Yeah, I, I think, again, going back to Steven O's numbers, it made sense to make this trade because you're going from 8.9 wins, which, by the way, it's still – that's just over 500 now, right? No, yes. it's still under 500. Yeah, yeah. Well, no, it's still under 500. Yeah, because we're, we're – 8.9, yeah, exactly. Yeah, so it goes from 8.9 to 8.5. So four-tenths of, of, of one game. 40% of one, one win is what that's costing you. You're getting out from all the salary cap issues. You're able to pay players you weren't previously able to pay, namely the rookies. And, and you can move on. Now, I, I think the issue is the salary cap is going to be a concern, perhaps at least a little bit. The salary cap has gone up a, a huge amount for next year. It's going to be a, a, an issue compared to other teams going forward. So I would imagine that um, – not Arthur Blank, but uh, – yeah, Arthur Blank, not Arthur Smith. Arthur Blank, the owner, has to understand that this is going to be a multi-year turnaround project. I'm sure that does not make him happy, but that's just the reality of when you get yeah. so far over your skis with the salary cap and, and have to get rid of players like, like Julio Jones. But I, I think it makes sense given that the projections are such that Julio Jones, who plays a position that maybe isn't the most important position on this team. That's truly terrible in a lot of places. You move on from him and, and try to improve through the draft. Yeah. I do wonder how this affects the organizational expectations for Arthur Smith. Yeah, and I mean, Terry last Fonda. year they won four games. If I gave you the over-under on a 17-game se- se- schedule of six and a half, what are you taking? For the Falcons, I'll probably – I mean, I liked their over before. Now I'm obviously a little less bullish. I would probably go over six and a half, but I, I don't – it would not be one of my better bets. The uh, the Titans, by the way, the, uh, the folks at Track have already updated the salary cap space by moving Julio Jones to the Titans. The Falcons have $24 million in salary cap space now. That is quite a bit of freedom uh, from a financial flexibility standpoint. The, the Titans, $16 million, $17 million under or over the salary cap, excuse me, uh, now. So they'll have some work to do. I, I would assume this is a rework Ryan Tannehill's salary situation, although it is possible they could just rework Julio Jones' contract too. He's got $15.3 million in terms of cap hit. Uh, Ryan Tannehill almost at $30 million with his cap hit. There, there's guys that they can work around. You, you would have to think it's, it's Tannehill would be the guy, you know, you, cause it, like you, you go get Julio Jones, you call Ryan Tannehill, you say, Hey, look, we'll give you a bunch of cash. We need to get your cap number down. It's a, it's a quick, easy fix right there. You know, like, no, nobody's, nobody's saying, no, I don't want that cash. So you can get this wide receiver right. you got for me under the, under the cap. Nobody's doing that. No, that's right. And um, let's see what did. What did I got Steven O say for uh, playoff chances went for 43%. I think you mentioned that sounded awfully high with Julio in Atlanta and now down to 35% without Julio. I don't know if they're making the play. I, I guess with the expanded team, an extra game, if you win nine games, you have a chance. I just don't know if this team's winning nine games or now eight and a half games. So 34%, one in three chance about that sounds closer to reality. Um, I do think there's a chance you could sneak in on the NFC side of things with nine wins. I think there's yeah. a very good chance nine and eight. I don't know if they're getting wins. nine wins is what I'm saying. Well, I'm just thinking – well, it also depends on what happens with Aaron Rodgers, right? Yeah. That's, that's, I mean, it does. Like, if Aaron Rodgers doesn't play for the Packers, suddenly you feel like the NFC North doesn't have a whole lot. Um, the Panthers and the Saints could be, you know, bottom-tier teams. I don't – not guarantee that they're going to be good. I, I, I feel okay about the Saints, not not great about the Panthers. Um, and then, you know, the NFC West is going to beat each other up and unlikely to send all four of them there. So, I, I do think there's a chance – that, you know, if you, and then the NFC East obviously is just terrible. I think there's a chance you could get in with nine wins as a, uh, as a playoff team in the NFC, but I, I, I don't know that the, I think your point is right. I don't know that the Falcons are winning nine games. Yeah. I don't know how, I mean, they won four games last year and this team, yeah. is this team better now than it was a year ago without Elio Jones? I mean, it's not better than it was two and a half hours ago. <laughs> you know, they're actively getting worse for next year by trading Julio Jones and the defensively, man, I mean, Dean Pease can cook some stuff up. And I, I would trust him to, to to pull it off and generate pressure without a ton of talent. But there's just – there's not a lot on there from a defensive standpoint. I would also note that – and we talked about this previously um, during the draft. The Falcons and Thomas Dimitrov passed on C.D. Lamb for A.J. Terrell. Now, A.J. Terrell might be uh, a really good player eventually. But they could have C.D. Lamb and Kyle Ridley and Calvin Pitts right now. And that would be sick. They had to fix that defense. I mean, I'm not going like, to. One cornerback doesn't fix the defense. I, I said at the time they should have taken C.D. Lamb, even with Julio and Calvin Ridley on the on the roster. And, you know, there's a new GM. So it's not, you know, it's not A.J. Terrell's not Terry Fontenot's guy. I'm just saying, you know, I'm just saying what I'm You're saying. You're just saying. I'm just saying. Who, uh, Calvin Ridley, C.D. Lamb, and Kyle Pitts 
and you are thinking you, your offense is set up for the long haul. Yeah. I mean, I, I suppose, but I don't think they were under the impression that um, Julio was, was going to want out right. of town. Then. That's right. By the way, is Julio Jones the greatest player in Falcons franchise history? I don't know. Deion don't Sanders? Know. Deion Sanders was there for a little bit. Brian Jordan, both two-way players. Matt Ryan. I mean, it's two maybe. sport players, I should say. I mean, Defa- it's not a it's not a great. Yeah, list. I think it has to be Matt Ryan. It's either Michael Vick, Matt Ryan, Julio Jones, or Dion. I think. Yeah, I think Julio. I mean, Michael Vick has the, the obviously the off field stuff that set him back a little bit. It's, it's a little bit prison for a couple of years. Yeah. MBD. Um, MBD. I would say that. Julio is in consideration. You'd probably go with Matt Ryan. Julio's Julio's the greatest non-quarterback in franchise history, right? Does he leapfrog Deion Sanders? Yeah, I, I don't know how long Deion was there. That's the only thing. How long was Deion there? Because he played a lot of places. Deion did play a lot of places. But I do love the fact that he played multiple sports. That's that's a huge. So he was in Atlanta for one, two, three, four, five. The first five years of his career. Yeah. Spent five more years in Dallas, it looks like. One year in San Fran and one year in Washington. And then he took three years off. He was retired. Came, I forgot about that. Came back as a 37, 38 year old to play with the Ravens. Oh my gosh, yeah. I forgot about that. So yeah, I, I think you know you can mention him in the top five, but he's he's I don't think he gets much higher than that just because he only played there five years. I wish Stathead wasn't such a pain in the butt to search. Oh, so most career uh, career approximate value for Atlanta Falcons. Uh number one, Matt Ryan 193. Number two, Mike Ken. Oh, the played, offensive lineman, right? Yeah, played from 78 to 94, 139, and then Julio Jones at number three. I will say this, though, as I'm looking over this, the first five years, right? Yeah, five years. Who, um, the primetime had 24 picks. He had five picks as a rookie, three, six, three, seven. He also had three touchdowns. So he put up some numbers, man. Yeah, prime. He had yeah. seven he forced fumbles. Freaking Deion Sanders, man. He was playing for the Braves and the Falcons. This is the most the amazing time. stat ever. He had seven forced fumbles, and this is a man who never tackled anyone in, in a 12-year NFL career. Think about that. Well done. It's incredible. Uh, yeah. The other thing we should add about Julio Jones, and we'll get out of here. Um, Julio. What was, sorry, what was Matt Ryan and Julio's uh, career approximate value? 193 for Matt Ryan. Okay, 119 for Julio Jones. Oh, okay. Deion had 53 for, for the, the five years in Atlanta. Okay. The, as you'll recall, my first year with the, uh, with CBS sports 2000, well, 2010, but then my first draft was a 2011 draft famously Thomas Dimitrov traded up to get Julio Jones swapping with the Cleveland Browns, making a massive trade up the board. So the Falcons could get Julio Jones in that draft. Do you think now we all know, I mean, we all know that the, if you take, if you take what the Browns got and use their picks on the Falcons won the deal by a landslide. Do you think it was still a good move? Yeah. Uh, and here's why, because the whole idea is to trade up for that. And it was extremely risky. The whole idea is to win a Super Bowl. They should have won the Super Bowl. They messed around 28 to three and all that. And they had really good teams before that too. Like Matt, Mike Smith had some good Falcon teams that Julio was a part of. And Julio wasn't the problem. The problem was sort of Matt Ryan putting it all together. He finally did that MVP year. And of course we know how that sort of unfolded. They should have won the Super Bowl. And if, if that's the, the end result, then absolutely. It was the right move. Julio led the league in receiving twice in 2015 with 1871. Uh, and then in 2018 with 1677, only had one season with the Atlanta Falcons um, in his uh, – how many years is it? Three, six. In his 10 years with Atlanta, only one season with double-digit touchdowns, which is kind of crazy. Uh, from – there was some – you know, he, 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 he came to the combine with a broken foot and still ran a 4-3 or 4-2 or whatever it was. It was an insane performance at the combine. NBD, to quote you. Yeah, no big deal. Uh, if you look at Julio's 16-game average – in other words, so this is per 16 games, as if he played full seasons for the Falcons. He didn't always do that. He had, I think, one, two, three, four years, five years where he you know, played 14 or, or less games. And so that's worth noting. But if he played his 16 game average for the 10 years, he was with the Atlanta Falcons, 101 catches, 1,528 receiving yards per oh season, 15.2 yards per catch, and seven touchdowns per 16 games. The guy's a monster. I think he's a first ballot Hall of Famer when it's all said oh, and okay. done. Here we go. You don't well, think so? 
You think everybody is. I do think so. So let me, let me throw this out at you. So last two years, AJ Brown has averaged 1000 and about 60 yards, about 17 yards per reception, which is bonkers, nine touchdowns per season. And I'm trying to look. So Julio's last season, let's see, Julio's never had fewer than he started 13 games as a rookie and he had 959 receiving yards there Averaged 18 yards per catch, eight touchdowns that season. Um, and he's always had more than that when he's played at least 13 games. What can we expect from both these players production wise in Tennessee, if they play 14 plus games? That's, that's a great question. If you look at Calvin, so last year for the Falcons, Julio only played nine games, 771 receiving yards. Calvin Ridley went off for 1300 receiving yards. I don't think, I think 2000, I think 2,400 total receiving yards is perfectly between the two guys. It's perfectly reasonable. There's probably going to be less passing with the Titans, you would think, unless the defense is as bad as we as we believe it may be, in which case you could end up in situations like Atlanta where they're just throwing the ball a ton. And if that's the case, it wouldn't be surprising at all if both guys had 1,100, 1,200 receiving yards. I don't think that's crazy. Okay. Yeah, I just want to see. And the good news is both players know what it's like to play with other sort of quote-unquote superstars, whether it's Corey Davis, who was a top-five pick back in the day, whether it's Calvin Ridley, who came a little bit after – Julio, so it's not like a situation where you're the only show in town and then they bring another another young buck into the to the fold to, to, to try to make the offense better. So they, they both have experience doing that. So I, I think that's right. I think that's reasonable. So let me ask you this. I saw this debate sort of happening on – and this is a fantasy football debate, but you – know, I know. I'm, a fan, I'm a fantasy expert. Go ahead. I know you are. Um, who would you rather have in your fantasy draft? Let's say you have the uh, – it's the second round. Your pick is up. And you can either select AJ Brown or Calvin Ridley. Who are you taking? Calvin Ridley actually does pretty well without Julio Jones. Um, yeah, that's it, the argument. Is that with? I think it's Calvin because he's going to be the only show in town. Now, and to your point, maybe Kyle Pitts doesn't catch on fire immediately either. So you're leaning on him, Calvin Ridley, a little more still. I, I think it's possible that AJ Brown could be better. I do agree that I want the spot where Julio is not. Because, like, you know, the argument the, the argument can cut both ways. You can say that Julio allows the guy who's playing next to him to get open and to produce. And Calvin Ridley, he's produced without Julio Jones there in Atlanta. I mean, he's, you know, with him there in Atlanta and without right. him there in Atlanta. He can do it both ways. Um, but I like the argument that I'll take the guy who's number one and not competing with Julio Jones for targets. As and a Calvin more- really, to your point, proved that he's not Juju Smith-Schuster without Antonio Brown. He was able to do that, whereas Juju struggled in a post AB world. I, I don't think Calvin will. Yeah. Uh, both guys are, I guess, I guess Calvin Ridley is a fourth year wide receiver who AJ Brown going into his third year. I, I still think AJ Brown can be plenty. Um, like I, Here, Here's the thing. It put AJ Brown on the Falcons and bring Calvin Ridley over to the Titans. You're taking AJ Brown. That's right. Fan. That's right. That's right. I want, I want the guy who's not dealing with Julio as competition for targets. Uh, but this will probably dip AJ Brown a little bit in terms of his fantasy value. I, I mean, he was going at the end of the first round. And so I would, I'll gladly scoop up some AJ Brown in the second round of drafts. And if you can get both of those guys, Calvin Ridley and AJ Brown, not the Ooh. worst thing in the world. Julio was very cheap. I'm looking at fantasyfootballcalculator.com just because the first thing that popped up. Julio was going in the fourth round. Huh. I think out of, out of concerns for you just didn't know where he was going to be. Yeah. You know, so it, it, typically, where speaking, is, guys, out of curiosity, where's Aaron Rodgers going? Uh, that's a good question. He's going in the fifth round. Would he be a first round pick typically or no? Uh, no, be one of the top quarterbacks off the board. He, so he's going, Mahomes is going in the second round on oh, average. Right. Then Josh Allen, Kyler in the third, Dak in the fourth, Russell, Lamar, Justin Herbert, and then Rodgers. Oh, okay. That's, I mean, I, I mean, I'll right now, if you're asking me who I want to draft at quarterback, I'm definitely taking all those guys ahead of Rodgers just because of the unknown. You can't invest. I mean, I'll take Joe Burrow over him too. So, um, all right, that'll do it. Julio Jones to the Tennessee Titans. Ryan Wilson, thanks for taking the time out to, uh, to bang out the emergency podcast, pal. You're welcome.